Hello everyone. When you were watching the events unfold during the assault of the Broker Shore, did you ever wonder to yourself, why are we attacking at this time? Why was Varian so certain that they could make it out of there? Why did the Elias and Horde walk blindly into this obvious death trap? Didn't they have scouts to inform them and warn them about the situation? Well, as it turns out, the Rogue campaign actually fills in some of the blanks, so that's what we're going to talk about today. For the Alliance. Let's begin, shall we? After Katkar and the Kid and Thor teleport Daladan to the Broken Isles, a Ravenhold courier shows up with an urgent message from none other than Jorach Ravenhold. Your presence is requested in the Hall of Shadows at once. Enter the glorious good storefront and utter the Raven Calls to Red. He will show you the way. Come alone and ensure you are not followed. The eyes of the uncrowned are upon you. Jorah Ravenhold is the leader of the Ravenhold Assassin Organization, who could be found within the headquarters called Ravenhold Manor. This one is located in the Hillsborough foothills, and they were the rivals of another rogue faction called the Syndicate, and before the Cataclysm, not a lot of action was seen at the manor. Rogues used to go there to learn how to detect traps, there was a sunken temple questline with Jorah, and reaching Exalted with Ravenhold, that was part of the Insane in the Membrane achievement. With the Cataclysm, we found the Black Dragon Raphion taken to the manor while he was still in his egg. He hatched there, and he recruited rogues for his legendary quest to arm them with some beautiful daggers and help him with taking out some of the corrupted black dragon flight. When order halls were announced, a lot of rogues got really excited. They wanted the manor to be their spot, but Blizzard decided to give them a base in the sewers of Dalaran. At least they did get a little bit of Ravenhold, as he's leading the Uncrowns. Ah, there's our final member. Welcome to the crew. Don't worry, they're friendlier than they look. I'm pleased you chose to heed our call. We've discussed inviting you into our ranks for some time. He's not the only member, of course. There's also Fleet Admiral Tetis of the Bloodsail Buccaneers, Princess Tess Greymane, daughter of Gan Greymane, Valera Sanguinar, former arena group member of Varen and Brawl, Taushi, one of the best amongst the Shadow Pan, and Garona Half Orkin, the half orc half Draenei, who was forced to murder Varian's father. She gave birth to Madan, and she worked against Cho'Gal and the Twilight Hammer during the Cataclysm. All of them gathered here are the Slayers of Kings, the downfall of empires, the unseen blades that write the true history of this world. Seated before us are the Shadows, the Council which aims the Blades of the Uncrowned wherever their will demands it. They have brought us here today with an offer. All according We're offering you a seat at our table. Take it, and your questions will be answered. You have but to sit. Smart choice. We are the Shadows. Leaders of the Uncrowned. We employ a variety of methods to ensure the safety of Azeroth and to secure our rightful place within it. Not the least of these methods is secrecy. As our title suggests, we prefer to stay in the shadows. But the events at the Broken Shore have forced our hand. We haven't the time for subtlety. We invite you to this table because we are confident you have the skills it takes to face this threat directly. And to prevail. Settle in, then we can discuss the details. Good to have a new face at the table. I was getting tired of Tethys's ugly mug. No offense, Tethys. None taken. So long as you don't insult me face! I have heard many tales of your accomplishments. I can't imagine half of them could be true. As a welcome gift, we get the Uncrowned Insignia, carried by all the members of the Uncrowned at all times, since there's no other way to be sure that you are who you say you are, since you know nobody can murder you and steal the seal and pretend to be you. Was that all? That insignia marks you as one of us. Carry it with you always. They were looking for someone who can operate outside their halls and were the answer to that search. We will be their blade in the dark that vanquishes their foes, but in order to do so, we'll first need to get a powerful artifact to wield it in the war against the Legion. The members have three plans ready to go. We pick which artifact we want to pursue, and upon returning to base, we celebrate with a little toast. Was that all? Here, here. I'd like to propose a toast. Today, this shadow secured the legendary Dreadblades and in doing so, has enabled us to strike at the Legion directly. 
join me in raising a glass not only to our newest shadow, but to the dawn of a new era for the uncrowned. Well done. Something's off about this here brew. Ugh. Vanessa? Uh, uh, did you really think I died in the dead mines? My elixir brought me just close enough to death to fool your weakened mind. Did you know that I was favored to become the final shadow? Yet despite their assurances, every single one of them put their lot in with you instead. It's a pity, really. Jurok did so much for me. He won't be happy when he comes to and finds you dead. Let's see how long you last. It's nothing personal. This is purely business. Come on, show me the legendary fighter I've heard so much about. Vanessa Van Cleef, daughter of Edwin Van Cleef, who was murdered by adventurers during classic World of Warcraft, and by doing so, they orphaned poor Vanessa. She spent her life learning the craft, training her body. She was never very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, not like her father anyways, but she did become very good at poisons. During the Cataclysm, we saw her revive the Defiers Brotherhood, turn the people against Stormwind, and lead assaults upon Razor Hill. Once more, we ventured into the Dead Mines, we took down her crew and Vanessa, but apparently she was able to fool us and make it out alive. Stop! Stop! No more! Oh, my head. Valera, you okay? Van Cleef, the Uncrowned still have a use for you. You have a choice. Live and serve as our newest Shadow's agent. Or die where you stand. Shockingly, I'd prefer to live. Then it's settled. Congratulations. Van Cleef is one of our best. As you've seen firsthand. I trust you'll be true to your word, Vanessa. I'd hate to imagine your father being disappointed in you. Perhaps the others were right. After putting Vanessa in her place, we meet up with Mara Nagafogger, who recently completed a project which should allow us to increase the strength of our weapons. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that the new shadow I see walking into my vault? Unfrickin' believable. This goblin, with his pile of riches and his own personal sweat regulators, he has earned his fortune from a very popular potion called the Nogginfogger Elixir. Now I haven't seen it being used much recently, but back in the day everybody was dropping the money to buy his wares, which earned him a pretty penny. He even became the Baron of Ketchistan, and now he got his hands on a rare venom from an uncharted island deep in the South Seas. They captured as much as they could, his boys built a device that can inject the venom into our weapons, and by doing so, greatly empowered it. There's just one catch though. He wants a whopping 100 gold for the services. But hey, we have these legendary blades in our hands. What good are they if not to threaten a greedy little goblin? Keep hey, it! Hey, hey, ooh, hey, I don't want no trouble. Go right ahead! Jeez. After upgrading a weapon, we talk with Nikki the Gossip, who's standing next to the bulletin board. We select our first point of attack on the Broken Isles, and we start our adventures. After gaining some experience, killing some enemies, and making some allies, we return to Dalaran, where Valera is looking for us. Psst. Come closer. I have something to tell you. Lord Ravenholt has something important to discuss with you. He is asking that you return to the Chamber of Shadows immediately. The Uncrowned work behind the scenes, pulling strings here, snipping others there. It's a matter of making the right choices at the right time in the most elegant manner possible. They've all decided that we need to recruit some shadows to send out on our most important missions. People that we can trust, or at least that we can trust to get the job done. One of them is Vanessa Van Cleef, who's absolutely shocked that after all that went down, we still want her as a champion. And we also recruit Corona, whose game, as long as there's a challenge to the kill. Good choice. Just don't call me champion, ever. 
to our sister champions, I mean, sorry Corona, don't hurt me, to assist our followers, we need some bandits to accompany them, and the best one to train them is Lonika Steelblade. Lonika has been running a rogue academy at the World's End Tavern in Sheffield City. We'll make her an offer she can't refuse, or, you know, give her a legit job and a nice location for the academy. Our followers travel to Outland to bring her back to base, and now we have the ability to recruit some bandits. Now they're not the healthiest looking bunch, but I'm sure they'll do in a pinch, so let's put them to work and have to find Winston Wolf. You've heard of Winston Wolf, right? Of course you have, who hasn't? Jorach suggested that we send our new merry gang of bandits off to have a little chat with the wolf at Ravenholt Manor. We just have to make sure that they're nice and civil, or that will be the last that we'll see of them. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. Winston Wolf, he is part of the Ravenholt's crew back at the manor, and he's a reference to Winston the Wolf from the movie Pulp Fiction. Our boys are thankfully civil enough, and he joins us with plans and ideas to upgrade a little base in the sewers. Things seem to be running very smoothly so far, but an urgent matter that requires our attention has shown up. The body of a woman with a knife in her back has turned up in the sewers. Normally, such a matter would be less than newsworthy, but this isn't your average cutthroat. It's an SI7 operative, none other than Amber Kiernan. She's been with the Alliance since the classic days, working with Mafia Shaw against the Defiers Brotherhood. She then got a massive part during the events of Mr. Pandaria, where she joined the initial strike force to this undiscovered land. Now here she is, she's dead, assassinated in her own backyard. An SI7 missive is found in her hands, but it's encrypted and we have no way of decoding it right now. And not only that, if the SI7 links us to the murder, it would simply be bad for business. We'll need to get to the bottom of this sooner rather than later. Until next Find out what SI7 is up to. We can ill afford to have unknown variables at this stage of the game. The SI7 is the espionage and intel branch of the Alliance. They are based in Stormwind City and they're led by Master Mafia Shaw. As of late, they've been acting peculiar, so we send out some of our peoples to assess the situation. It might be nothing, but if we are going to win this war against the Burning Legion, the last thing that we need is for something wholly unexpected to occur. Our spies come back with the knowledge that Shaw, he's been stepping up the number of agents that they have within the Horde territory. We must keep a close and watchful eye on this situation, and we need to find out who is behind the assassination of Amber Kiernan. It won't be long before SI7 realizes that their agent is MIA and comes sniffing around the halls of shadows. With a pair of stylish spy glasses set to scan for traces of hemoglobin, we can track Amber's blood trail back to the culprits. We're told to stay out of sight, but these glasses are so stylish that they make quite a few heads turn in the other one even says, Damn, Randomi, back at it again with the sweet shades. Nice. Remember that? I remember. How much longer is this going to take? These drop boxes are tricky. I've almost got it. Amber Kiernan was one of our own. I still can't believe we had to kill her. When the orders come from Master Shaw himself, you don't ask questions. You're sure you got her right? We can't afford to mess this up. I told you already, I never miss. We should have killed her back in Citrine Bay. Doing the hit in Dalaran was too risky. We can't afford witnesses. The Burning Legion invades Azeroth, and SI7 is wasting valuable resources hunting down and assassinating one of the top agents? Something isn't quite adding up. We need to find out how deep this goes. Why was Amber Kiernan being hunted by her own organization? The encrypted letter that she was carrying, it may hold the clues, but we need more information. The SI7 assassins mention Citrine Bay, so that's what we'll search for clues, but we figure out a way of getting this letter decrypted. I be knowing Citrine Bay, I be knowing it well. I'll be off ahead in search for clues. I'll wait for you there. Keep your Them safe. ships belong to the Red Blade. There be no doubt about it. It'd be no coincidence that we be in Citrine Bay investigating a murder, and we find a band of pirates known as the Red Blade here as well. Time to do some swashbuckling, search for information, and while we're at it, score some sweet rum for Teddis. I, Master Matthias Shaw, hereby authorize the Red Blade to hunt down the rogue agent Amber Kiernan. Bring me her head, and the Red Blade will have full access to Stormwind Bay. And the royal pardon for past crimes committed. Keep your sight. SI7 be sailing with the Red Blade. This be not jolly news. Whatever Amber Kierner knew, Mafia Shaw didn't want to getting out. Aye, this be dirty business indeed. Hiring the Red Blade at such a price, just to hunt down and kill one of their own. We best get back to the House of Shadows and let Lord Ravenholt know what we found. Whatever the SI7 be up to, it be going deeper than we first imagined. Take it easy. These be not the Red Blade's waters. Who sent you, laddie? I'll 
I'll never tell ye! Do you know who I be, laddie? Now that ye mention it, ye does look somewhat familiar. Tethys of the Bloodsail Buccaneers. Oh god, no! I've heard of you. Please don't kill me! Now I'll only ask ye one more the hour. Who sent ye? It was SI7! They offered us the riches of Stormwind in exchange for Amber Kiernan! We've got what we've been needing here. Ye be off to Dalaran. I'll catch up. I think I just soiled myself. Oh, please don't kill me! <laughs> Aye, this letter be writ in no ordinary code. This here code be the work of a true master. Translation, please? I, I cannot understand his incessant pirate gibberish. He said that the letter was written in an advanced code that will not be easily broken. He had best watch your tongue, lass, or you'll be making a trip to the plank. T -t -t plank Enough! This is a dangerous mystery that we stumbled upon, and it would not be fair for Jorag to stand idly by as we risk our lives to uncover this corruption. After all, without honor and brotherhood among thieves, none of us will stand to profit. From this point on, he'll pledge his personal services against the threat of the Burning Legion, and the dark mystery that we're unraveling as he becomes one of our followers. Next to Jorag's support, Tedus also believes that it is long overdue to get some pirate blood into our ranks, so he wants us to send our followers out to go and round up Yancy Krilsen. He's an old salt, down straight foreign way and hopefully he'll keep a better eye out as he's recruiting for us since in the past he did allow adventurers who were actually working for Booty Bay into the Bloodsteel Buccaneers causing all kinds of problems. Tell him that if he can't convince enough sea dogs to join up he should break out the Belaine pin for a good old press gang. With the additional pirates filling up our sewer, Fleet Admiral Tedis decides that our time together has been like being on the poop deck in the early morning when the salty ocean rum splashes you wide awake. For those who don't speak pirates, he likes us and he wants to become another follower ready to be sent out on adventures. Now the threat of the SI7 discovering what exactly it is that we're up to, it's a big one so we must make sure that they're too busy to be paying attention to our real plans. Valera has set up some missions to do just that. In Dalaran we start with some false intrigue on our very own Archmage Khadgar. Ooh la la. In Stormheim, Lady Sylvanas Windrun has disappeared, and we're going to let the SI7 think that we're hot on her trail. We are, of course, but we will assign a decoy agent for the SI7 to notice. In Azuna, we have a deep contact on the ground. He goes by many names, including Mr. Shackle. Some of her people are sent down there to interfere with him. Then, in High Mountain, the tribes are outstanding warriors, hunters, and shaman. But what they are not is stealthy. We set up surveillance of each tribe's camps. Now, I'm not sure how that would keep the SI7 busy. Perhaps them checking on our surveillance. Either way, the last one is the Sudamar, where there is something with the Nightborn. Unfortunately, their city has too much protection, but still, we should let the SI-7 see us trying. Without I am it. going to look into something. In the meantime, let us make certain that SI-7 does not catch on to what we are really up to. While our followers are busy with that, Winston Wolf has made a request. He says that he needs a rather large amount of demon blood. Now, he was not specific what it's going to be for, and they did not ask. The wolf rarely asks for anything, so when he does, we jump. He gets results 100% of the time, and then some. We should show him the same professional courtesy and bring him 50 fell blood. Nagelfager also makes a reasonable request, but for him, we're not that jumpy. He's blackmailing us, saying that if we do not meet his very reasonable requisition request, he's going to close off access to the Crucible. Marin's asking for a hefty amount of Ephril. He said something about us recently holding a blade to his throat, and that he's simply returning the favor. 20 Ephril it is, and you might wonder if the response is different if you actually did pay him the 100 gold, but according to Wowhead comments, that's sadly not the case. Hurry hey, back. next time you hold a blade to someone's throat, out, consider who you're dealing with. Now we're square. Business as usual going forward. Feel free to use the crucible as much as you like. Our scouts' diversions are working perfectly, and as an added bonus, some of Valera's suspicions about a particular item, which will prove useful in deciphering the SI7 letter, they've come to light in Stormheim. There's a legend about a magical jewel that the Vrijko created long before the time of man. The jewel was said to be able to decipher anything, but she doesn't want to talk about it, not just yet, not until we have some proof. The only way that we're going to get this proof is by taking etching of the Raven's Eye tablets in the Mars Souls on the Nagelfar, the Ship of the Dead. Without I do it. not know how you are going to get onto the Nagalfar, the Vrykul ship of the dead. 
But if we are to confirm my suspicions about the item, you are going to have to find a way to do so. Preferably without dying if you can manage it. Before entering Hellier's Domain, let's first linger in the land of the living for a little bit longer and have some fun with Naga Fogger. Word has it that Trade Prince Gallywix recently acquired a priceless, one-of-a-kind love potion. There's only one goblin who can replicate it, and of course that one goblin is none other than Naga Fogger himself. If we get him the potion, he can make us both richer than kings. Oh, this is gonna be the heist of a lifetime! The Pleasure Palace is located in Ashara, and it's been on high alert since the war started. Gallywix isn't letting anybody in except his personal staff, but Nogafogger knows a girl on the inside. Listen up, mooks. The Pleasure Palace is off limits. I don't want anybody setting foot on my property. Now, I'm going to hit the sauna for some R&R. &R. So bring me a frozen cocktail and some cocoa butter. <laughs> We talk to her, and Trixini in Russell Camp, she tells us to hit up Isaac the bartender. He should know how to get the key to the safe, and if he won't talk, we'll just have to remind him that he owes her one for the you-know-what in the you-know-where. Got it? Oh, I got it alright, wink wink. Today is a lucky day though, even as we speak, Gallywix is enjoying a relaxing stop in his personal sauna, allowing us to sneak in, grab the keys, and get the potion before anybody notices. Mooks, where's my cocoa butter? What part of cocoa and butter did you not get? Oh, it's getting hot in here. I think it's time for a relaxing nap. Wait a minute. One of my keys is... Gah! Somebody stole the key to my safe! Oh! Whoever did this is gonna pay! Mooks, find them! Find them! Why is this cocoa butter so slippery? Yeah, get me a towel! Whoever bought the slippery cocoa butter is fired! Keep it! We'll have those love-struck schlubs throwing their money at us in no time! Nogafogger is going to need some time alone with the potion, but before we give him some privacy, he offers us his services to the cause. Without our thieving prowess, he'd be a much poorer goblin than he is today, so together we'll put an end to this burning legion invasion and line our pockets with all the wealth in Azeroth. Now after a little trip into hell and grabbing that etching of the Raven Eyes tablets, we return to Valera and confirm that she was right, that the legends are true, the Raven's Eye truly exists. She had heard about Lord Ravencrest's almost perfect espionage team during the War of the Ancients. Now we know how they got the information, and the others will not believe it when we tell them. There is a myth, a fable, that is whispered of in dark corners and back alleys. It is of a jewel so powerful that no one believes it exists. But I assure you, it does. Surely everyone here has at one time or another heard the tale of the Raven's Eye? The legend is that the gem conveys the power to read any language, follow any map, and most importantly, to decipher any code. A merry yarn! But that's all she'd be. The Raven's Eye don't exist. It never did. It'd just be some old wives' tale to scare little rogues who are wanting to keep their secrets hidden. Exactly right. We are talking about the end of secrets. Well, other people's secrets anyway. But more to the point, the Raven's Eye will give us the means to unlock the secrets hidden in the SI-7 letter. And we know where it is. Or at least she thinks she does, since our next stop takes us into Valshira at the Blackrook Hold. There we unlock some of the ancient chests to find the Raven's Eye, but instead of the eye itself, all we find is a ledger. The ancient elven tome is musty. Yellow pages detail the day-to-day -day requisition of various items of importance. It's not exactly what we came here to find, but not all is lost. An entry about the Raven's Eye, it says that the last person to have it in their possession was Lord Ravencrest himself. Apparently, nobody knew about the priceless jewel or took it from his body, so thankfully, the Legion resurrected him, and now we have a chance to confront the Lord of Blackrook Hold and take the jewel from him. While you are in Blackrook Hold, there is an urgent matter I must attend to. I will meet you back at the Hall of Shadows. 
next to fighting with Ravencrest and the Dreadlord that's controlling him, we also spend some extra time at the cemetery. All Blood Elves, their descendant from High Elves, who in turn came from these lands before they were sundered. With all the undeads being risen and disturbed, Valeria's ancestors need to be put to rest, and we get to do that for her. They'll never use the Raven's Eye. Decipher the code in the SI7 letter. With the legendary Raven's Eye in our possession, we can finally decipher the knowledge that Amber Kiernan died for. We were on the Broken Shore mere hours before the Alliance and Horde fleets arrived. Matthias Shaw led our SI7 team on a secret recon of the island. We were awaiting extraction. Our evac is almost here. We have to warn the Alliance and Horde. They must turn their fleets around. The Broken Shore is a death trap. Anything, Lieutenant? The island is crawling with demons. Far more than we anticipate. Ah! So, you have uncovered our little secret. Let me assure you, your precious fleets will fall into our trap. You'll never get away with it, Death Rock! Oh, but I will. And you, Matthias Shaw, will help us to do it. Now I am the leader of SI7. <laughs> And there it is. What was a near impossible fight from the start turns out to be an actual death trap. Sean is true, they knew that this was not the day for the Elias and Horde to challenge the Legion. But thanks to the Dreadlord Defarak, the Elias and Horde walked in blindly, and we all remember how it went down. It's also interesting that Defarak has infiltrated the SI7 disguised as Shaw, and he's currently leading them, which means that when we went into Stormwind to pick up our artifacts, it was actually Defarak who was talking to us. Go. Get out of my city before I change my mind. Now he's whispering in King Anduin's ears, whispering and manipulating to put the Horde and Alliance against each other and turn their focus away from the Legion. Apparently, Greymane and Sylvanas, them fighting with each other, that's not actually the Horde and Alliance fighting. It could be a lot worse, so let's take action. Let's put our troops to action to reveal this imposter to the new King of Stormwind. If we fail to do so, the Alliance will surely be eaten alive from within and the Burning Legion will win this war for a certainty. Keep we must find Matthias Shaw and use him to prove that Deathrock has taken his place. Our followers are sent out to discover where in the world Matthias Shaw is, and Valera believes that we work well together, that she brings out the best in us, so she becomes another follower. The Broken Shore is the obvious location to begin our search for Shaw. We must determine where the Legion is holding him, but he's being moved around. Devarak is a clever dreadlord, and the trail leads to Blackrook Hold. Too bad that we didn't know the Shaw before, when we actually went in there to collect the eye. Now by the time that our followers get there, Matthias is already gone, so the next spot to check is the command center known as the Altar of End Times, which floats above Ferranar in Azuna. They break in, have a little look around, but they come up empty. Now the Burning Legion, they have a very powerful ally in the Vrykel God King Skovald. Perhaps they're holding Mafia Shaw at the gates of Valor, but once again, nothing there, and we're running out of leads. It's time to do the impossible. It's time to sneak into the SI7 headquarters and see if Defarak has left any clues for us, and he actually did. We now know that our SI7 friend is being held at Felso Hold in Sudamar. Not sure why we didn't check there first. After pruning the garden, as to how she puts it, and finishing 30 world quests, it's time to dig up the rotting tree stump in the middle. Put another way, we need to make sure to keep the forces of chaos from overwhelming the Broken Isles. We need to complete any one rare elite world quest. Be choose, but choose wisely. The fate of the Broken Isles is in your hands. I have no idea why, something about defeating the Force of Chaos. Either way, after specifically killing one rare elite in the world, it's time to actually rescue Shaw from Felsol Hold. We're going to need a big distraction, and Naga Fogger is playing nice, he even donated some bombs to the cause. We get the honor of placing them in position, we detonate them, and we can see the Legion scramble to check out what the hell's going on. You cannot hide from me. Silent and dead, let us stealth quickly to Matthias Shaw. He is in here. It's not far now. He's just down the stairs. Hurry! The uncrowned to the rescue. I wouldn't expect anything less. 
You keep them off me, and I will get SI-7 here out of his cage. Here they come! Get me out of here so that I can help. You'll get your chance soon enough, Matthias. One down, one to go. What's wrong, Taoshi? I can't pick the lock. It is up to you. Thank you. I will get Matthias to safety through the sewer tunnels. We will see you back in the Chamber of Shadows. The easy part's done, now it's time to do the impossible, and Defarak could not help but gloat. He was careless, and Shah overheard many of their plans. The fate of Azeroth hangs in the balance, but for all of that, he has a very simple plan. Simply, get him. Look to the shadows. The situation in Stormwind is worse than we thought. We have a plan to reveal Defarak for the imposter that he is, Master Shah. First, allow me to express my gratitude that you risked your lives to rescue me. Tell she is correct. The situation is dire and degrading quickly. The Alliance is about to launch an attack on the Horde. Posing as me, Detherok is whispering lies about the Horde in the ears of the new King of Stormwind. He must be stopped before it is too late. The plan is simple. Sneak into Stormwind, expose Detherok, and then kill him. Tethys will get us to the harbor by sea. We'll have to stealth through to SI-7. We cannot fly in. Detherok has snipers on the rooftops and wanted posters up with all of our faces. Thank you, Master Shaw. That's the plan, Uncrowned. All in favor? We get the cast the deciding vote, choosing the destiny of not only the Uncrowned, but also the Alliance, the Horde, and the fate of Azeroth itself. Indubitably. It is decided. We either expose Defarok, or it's war between the Alliance and the Horde, and we lose the world to the Legion. This is likely a one-way trip. Detherok is most certainly expecting us. Let me know when you are ready. We'll split up and stealth in. Keep moving. Use the hay bales if you get into trouble. See you at SI-7. Good luck. And so we sneak into Stormwind City, where the grass is green and the girls are pretty, but the citizens, they're not so friendly, as Defarok has turned them against us. Throughout the town, wanted posters can be found. Wanted! Dead, Taoshi and Randomi are hereby wanted dead for conspiracy with the Burning Legion and crimes against the Alliance. A sizable reward will be granted upon proof of death delivered to any SI-7 agent. For the Alliance, for King Anduin, Master Matthias Shah, leader of SI-7. This has gone on long enough, let's expose the Dreadlord for what he truly is. They're upstairs! Can I help you? What can I do for you? What's the situation? Greetings. It's Shaw. I'm Matthias the real Matthias Shaw. Shaw! No, I am! Kill him! I was actually hoping to see some kind of kill him, no kill him situation, where you're not certain who the real Matthias is, and only after beating him like half a senseless, do you actually figure out like, oh, this is not the real Matthias. That sadly didn't happen, as the red mark target is truly the demon. Enough! I need more room! My swarm will destroy you to sleep. Forget your alliance and horde are destined to destroy each other. <laughs> Perhaps, but not any time soon, demon. We it's fight. over. Speak with me when you're ready. I'll get us safely out of Stormwind. Detherok is dead. And Matthias Shaw is restored to his role as leader of SI-7. All-out war between the Alliance and Horde has been averted. We can now focus our full attention upon the Burning Legion. We will destroy them by every means possible. Through treachery and subterfuge. Through guile and assassination. And yes, by laying down our lives if need be. Let us celebrate the one who made all of this possible. Our newest Shadowblade! 
Next to our new title, we also gained two new followers, Taoshi, who is honor beyond words, and Sha himself. Of course, he can't officially become one of the Uncrowned, let alone the Council of Shadows. He is, after all, the leader of the SI7. But when we need his assistance or his guidance, we need but ask. We will work together through the back channels to ensure that the Burning Legion is destroyed. One final thing to do, they've empowered the Crucible, and with it, we can unlock the true potential of our weapon. All in good. In our line of work, we tend to develop a fondness for the tools of our trade. Mature affinity for those blades is like nothing we've seen before. The resources you've gathered across the Broken Isles will allow us to unlock even greater killing potential in your weapons. Raise your weapons before the Crucible of the Uncrowned. Watch as it does its work. Infusing your blades with deadly power. May our new weapons serve us well. The Uncrowned will do what no other can. Finish this war. And there ends the Rogue Order Hall campaign. All in all, I really enjoyed myself with this one. It was great seeing some familiar faces pop up. We even had Valera taking the stage. And most of all, we got some more information as to what went wrong with the assault on the Broken Isles. One of the first things that came to mind when I was watching that was Varian screaming to Sylvanas, just keep going! We all seem to be lost from the start. Now we have a bit more information as to how that happened, why they were so ill-prepared, and why there were ready forces on the Isles. The big point of critique that I've read, and that I truly agree with, is that it's very Alliance-centric, right? Can you imagine doing this Order Hall campaign as a member of the Horde? Sure, there is the threat that both the Horde and Alliance will go to war, but why not instead of Kerrigan have... I don't know, Shapemaster Kirin, for example, or have Orgrimmar infiltrated instead of Stormwind, something to show a bit of love to the Horde. Ah well, for me it's still one of the better Order Hall campaigns, and I really enjoyed it, so I hope you enjoyed the story as well. As always, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya! Yar. It be no coincidence that we be in Citrine Bay investigating a murder, and we find a band of parrots. Parrots? <laughs> Yar! We're a band of parrots! Yar! The SI7 is the espionage. Esp 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 espionage? Before entering Hellyer's domain, let's first linger in the land of the living for just a little bit longer and have some fun with Nogginfogger. <laughs> Nogginfogger, I love that name. <clears throat> and so we sneak into Stormwind City, where the grass is green and... <laughs> I'm not really gonna do this. Okay, whatever. And so we sneak into Stormwind City, where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. <laughs> okay, whatever. <clears throat> Come on, straight face, do it.